Hi, today I'm interviewing um, Maria Jukic, who actually I work with, so it's quite interesting talking to a colleague. Um, she's had a fairly varied um, career, particularly as she's been in both New Zealand and um, Australia. Uh, she has an MSc in geology from Auckland University, and then she went to Australia and worked in the mines um, in Western Australia for a while, and then she decided she needed to change direction slightly, so she went and studied at this um, University of Technology in Sydney and got an MSc in hydrogeology and groundwater. And then she worked for a while as a consultant, well, quite a while, eh? As a consultant <laughs> and then came back to New Zealand and is now working with Auckland Council as a senior specialist advisor um, in contaminated land. So, look, I'll leave it at that. She can tell you far more about her life. And so it's over to you, Maria. Thanks very much, Janet, and uh, thank you very much for asking me to come and chat with you. <laughs> so that's great. Um, so, okay, I was uh, born and raised in Auckland uh, from a Pākehā mother and a Croatian father. So from a uh, feminism point of view, that's a very interesting uh, situation. Uh, Croatians are fairly traditional in their, in their worldview. Well, they certainly have been, and we were certainly brought up in a fairly traditional family. Um, but, you know, we're dead. Well, mum and dad both worked, but mum did all the housework and the cooking and raising the kids. Um, but what, was, what is interesting, and I think like a lot of migrant families, um, we were really strongly pushed with regards to education. Um, there was certainly no sense of, well, you're a girl, so you don't need to, you know, educate yourself or have a career. No, really, really strongly pushed in that respect. So, um, yep, so we, I went off, uh, studied. Maybe not as hard as I should have in, at school, but uh, you know, went to university, uh, did chemistry and geology, or actually stumbled into geology just fairly accidentally, needed an extra unit, and uh, a boyfriend of mine said, oh, you should do geology. So, uh, yeah, I ended up absolutely loving it. So, ended up sort of actually majoring in that. Um, Yes, yeah, so that was great. Really loved it. And I think coming from a, a country like New Zealand where we're, you know, fairly tectonically active, it's, uh, you know, it's a fantastic place to study. Mm. So uh, when I finished my master's, uh, I was an unemployed geologist. And so uh, the options were rather either go into academia or, um, yeah, go and try and find some work. So I thought, okay, off to Perth. Thought I'd rather I'd rather earn some money at that time, so yeah, I went off to do some work in the mines as a first as an exploration geologist, and then as a pit geologist. Yeah, and I have to say, although I didn't particularly love the work because it was an area of geology I wasn't particularly um, interested in, it was an amazing um, experience. I've made some fantastic friends there. And it was so different to, I suppose, my university in a city liberal <laughs> friends type <laughs> lifestyle. Yes. A, bit of, a bit of a rude awakening to realise that not everyone thought the way that we did. So it was really good, actually. Um, it gave me an opportunity to work with some, you know, really different different kind of people. Um, so there, yeah, that was really good. But uh, you know, after about three years, oh, I think the gold price started to drop, so exploration programs were starting to shut down and. So it was a good opportunity to sort of reevaluate and go, oh, look, uh, no, this is not really for me. So as you said, I went off to uh, Sydney to do uh, study hydrogeology, which I really loved, and that was great. And I did have some idea that I was going to do that because I was going to go and work in third world countries yeah. uh, you know, at helping with water supply because, you know, water is obviously such an important um, resource for everyone. I uh, didn't quite get there, sadly. <laughs> so once I finished my master's, came out of that, also a poor, once again, a poor student. So I uh, <laughs> decided to find a job and sort of... Started, started but you got your out. masters, didn't you? Yeah. Yes, I did, yes. Yeah. So that was great. Um, so, yeah, but stumbled into contaminated land and, uh, yeah, sort of 15 years later, <laughs> well, here I am. Uh, so, yeah, so primarily worked in Sydney and Perth as a environmental consultant. Uh, had a little bit of an interlude with freshwater hydrogeology so that was good because it actually got me back up onto the mines again for a couple of years um, it was very interesting to see both from a health and safety and I, I suppose yeah certainly from a um, behavioral uh, sense uh, the changes that had been made there so when I first did when I was first working on the mines it was very um, 
it wasn't very uh, what's when they're regulated in a sense mm. I remember going doing work standing there in shorts and a t-shirt <laughs> in the middle of summer yeah just crazy standing next to a rig um, but it also like there were a lot more constrained in terms of how people behaved what was expected of you know of people so yeah that was quite interesting and then finally oh, a couple of years ago uh, had the opportunity to come back to New Zealand finally I should add that when I went to Perth initially it was only going to be for a couple of years mm. so 19 years later <laughs> I finally came back home so that was nice um, and at that time thought it would be nice to uh, work in a rather than going back to consulting to actually work in a position where was contributing to the, I suppose, the goodness or the, well, that's not the right word, you know, the well-being of the community. Mm. Hence why I um, got the job at the council. Um, yeah, so that's me here now. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting when I, um, when I carry out training at um, the council, um, particularly of the compliance um, staff, just virtually all of them have got the job in order to make a difference. To mm, mm. I'm sort yeah. of interested, how did you find, as um, a woman working in the mines, particularly that first time you went? And yes, so that was uh, quite hilarious, actually, in some, in some ways. And also, I know there was one incident that was quite concerning. But um, I remember the very first month I was there, I was speaking to one of the uh, drill drilling supervisors. So he was an older man in a more senior position. So you'd think he would be sort of a little bit more professional. I mean, he was, he was lovely. But I remember we got talking about sexual politics and he said to me oh yeah if a bird ever asked me for a root you know I wouldn't know what to say kind of thing but I'm just thinking bird root <laughs> you know are we back in the 60s so that I, that was about the first month I just I fell off the chair sort of laughing but going dear lord but um you know he was fine but yeah there was I was very lucky and in fact I found all through my career I've been really lucky that I've always been surrounded by a lot of strong women you know bolshie women and we had quite a lot of women there and uh you know made some of my best friends from that time at the in the mine the first time around um and i know even in geology the year that i was doing geology we had an inordinately high number of women doing that at that time um so in some sense uh yeah i was i found it was great you know i was of an age where you were sort of busy socializing so there was you know lots of guys there <laughs> though and uh but because I had that group of um, females around me, um, and we were all pretty, you know, pretty stroppy and loud, and uh, we didn't really let a lot of it phase us. So that was really nice. Um, uh, but I know there was one incident which really shocked me intensely, and it was a, and I think that was perhaps I was in a bit of a naive bubble until this happened, and I remember thinking, wow. So it was a, another f geologist who, oh, she had had an altercation with um, a certain contractor. I'm not sure, that, I don't recall the details. Um, it got very heated. She said to him, perhaps a little unwisely, uh, well, you know, I can get you kicked off the job, you know, blah, 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 which is not, I don't think, I think it, she, it escalated rather dramatically and it, you know, she, that probably wasn't necessary for her to say that. But regardless, um, yeah, apparently got very, very uh, tense and it's fine. I'm not, you know, it's dissipated. But I recall speaking to the camp manager the next day and he said something along the lines of, oh, she was lucky she didn't get raped. And I remember just going, what? Uh, along the, he said it in the sense that, you know, if she had, she would have deserved it type thing. Oh and I remember just being so appalled and just thinking, well, you know what, you're the cat manager. This is what I think happened in the, in the wet mess, in the bar. Um, so that was his area that he's responsible for. So surely if that was how serious the situation was, then he needed to step in. Yeah, I was just it was quite a shock. I think there was just that culture of, uh, you know, it's all good and fine while everything's going along well and everyone's friendly. But as soon as you step out of line, you know, watch yourself. Mm. You know, I, 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 I don't, you know, it was just a, yeah, it was a very uncomfortable situation. Um, and it's a quite shocking, you know, I don't know, it was just very, very odd. But, um, yeah, but I think as I said, all in all, I mean, 
you know, you had some, yeah. Oh. <laughs> you had some people, I think, whose mentality was a little bit back in the 70s. But in some sense, it was fairly straightforward to deal with because it was upfront. You know, um, you knew what you were generally dealing with. Um, but as I said, I was also lucky I had a very supportive uh, boss. He was great. Uh, so, yeah, it was, it was an education. But, um, yeah, I think said, for me, it was an excellent opportunity to, to learn quite a lot about uh, a variety of people, you know, rather than instead living in my little bit of a mm. bubble. Mm. Mm. But subsequently, when I went back working as a hydrogeologist, so that was probably about 15 years later, and um, things were a lot stricter then. And certainly, I think, um, you know, there would have been, if you had pulled any of that kind of nonsense, you would have been kicked off site for mm-hmm. sure. So, you know, any any threats of physical violence, whatever, that's it, you would have been gone. So it was good. It was good in that sense. Um, mm. But, yeah, no, it's, uh, it was, yeah, it was a great, I mean, I'm really grateful I had that experience. Mm. Yeah, so when I moved on to environmental consulting, I found, and I think we spoke about this, you know, last week in our conversations, but a lot of it, uh, the, there was a sort of lot more subtle sexism, and sometimes yeah. I think that's actually a lot, a lot harder to deal with, um, because then I think you can be accused of being overly sensitive or a little bit mm-hmm. neurotic, or mm-hmm. um, and uh, or you know, and sometimes it's not even that you're, there's just that sense of being a little bit excluded, um, yes. or there's yeah. there's certain double standards which I think um, can be quite frustrating. Mm. Yeah, so hmm, sort of. Interesting sort of comparing the different sort of workplaces in a way. Yeah, that subtle sexism, I just think, trying to think of examples, it's it's sort of along the lines, isn't it, where you suddenly mm. notice that, um, particularly if you're in a male-dominated team, they're all going off to the pub and, oh, mm. I've forgotten to ask you, you know, mm. and mm. Um, the socialising and, you know, a manager that is seen to have all the boys in the office, boys, mm in the mm. office, time, <laughs> yeah. but there doesn't seem to be any girls, as in mm. quite often. Mm. And, yes. But, and it is, it's difficult to combat, isn't it? You know? mm. It really is, yeah, it really is. Uh, yeah, because I said, if you, you know, what do you do with that? If you're being excluded, you can't go and say, well, you know, why aren't you inviting me into your office? Blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, it's a tricky one. Um, yeah, I, I, but ha, ha, I suppose in a sense, again, I've found I've been in environments where um, there's been a lot of women around a uh, large chunk of my career. I was working for a company that started up by three women, so, um, you know, who good friends. So I've been quite lucky in a sense. I've not directly experienced that, but, um, yeah, but I can kind of see, I think for me it's been more about yeah, there's sort of certain expectations about how women should behave and we should be kind and quiet and gentle and, uh, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, okay. Um, and I know I had um, a, a colleague who was probably about five years older than me and I think she, when she first started, uh, there was very few women in the industry and I think she really had to sort of fight quite um, hard to sort of uh, overcome some of the, sort of, I suppose, Six, you know, some of the sexism that she experienced, and uh, so she had quite a. Um, she could be quite what's the word now? Oh, I think quite staunch, but perhaps but that's not even the word I'm thinking of. But a little bit perhaps abrasive, um, and that really came back to un- very unfairly came back to bite her on the bum. Sort of about ten years later, just before I left. Perth, she was um, apparently looking for another position. She wasn't happy where she was, um, but apparently she had effectively been blacklisted um, for being difficult, which I think is appalling and mm. so unfair because I know there were certainly men in the industry whose personalities and their, the way that they, um, you know, their manner in dealing with people was far, far more abrasive mm. and far, far... Um, you know, far less appropriate, I would say. And, and I don't think that, um, you know, this person in particular, that she was anything like that. I know it's just something she could be very stubborn. Mm. Um, and, yeah, and I, and, and I spoke to a colleague at the time 
who I was working with, so I knew I was already leaving. I said, well, you know, hey, how about getting her on board? And he was just like, oh, no, no, she's just too difficult. No, 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 people won't work with her. And I was just really flabbergasted because she had a lot of knowledge. She was a good contaminated land mm. you know, consultant. Um, so that, that whole sense of if you're a bit abrasive, well, you know, we just can't possibly wear that from a woman, you know, no. it just seems really unfair. Yeah. No, it's that whole unevenness, isn't it, where mm. if we do end up having to speak out for ourselves um, mm. or even about an issue, that um, we immediately become aggressive or abrasive. Mm. It's actually <laughs> yes. just doing what everybody else, all the men do. And you yep. do get tired with that. You know, I've heard yeah. comments about myself simply because, you know, so you keep quiet about some things, but in the end you've mm. got to say something. And how yeah, ridiculous that we are yeah. treated so differently. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, that's, that's so true. But I think, you know, I've kind of got to that point where, pff, so what? Let them think what they like, actually. I mean, I suppose, although there is a difficulty there, I think sometimes that can, if that can stop your career progression, then it's really unfair. Mm. Um, but, I know, I think I've got, I have got to that point where I think, all right, look, you know, this is how I feel. Uh, oh, you know, I... I, I I could be quite <laughs> bolshy and, and, and pushy and loud and, and carry on um, sometimes. But I also like to think that I, that I counterbalance that with being, you know, generally, hopefully, a nice person and whatever. And they can see that I'm just really passionate about something or other. Um, and, you know, that's okay, surely. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, so, yeah, I, it's a, it is an interesting one, though, but I think it's... Um, yeah, I said, again, maybe I'm just being naive because it, but I think with this, this colleague in Perth, it really shocked me again. And the comment I said to my colleague, this is a guy who I sort of thought was fairly reasonable and switched on. For, so for a comment like that to come from him was quite shocking. Mm. Mm. But see, as you talk and as I talk, um, we're always aware of that. Mm. that yeah. Oh, you mustn't be too ab abrasive, you know. Yeah assertive otherwise it's going to come back and bite you um mm. you know you find a man that has to even consider that so, <laughs> yeah. and that's is, what you've talked yeah. about the subtle yeah. sexism isn't mm. it mm. Mm. look actually you know you're spot on it's so true it's kind of insane that we even have these have to have these conversations about, <laughs> you know oh, do I need to moderate my behaviour? You know, and I think there have been times where I thought, oh, was I too shrewish today? And That's a good yeah. one, isn't it? Shrewish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chasing, you know. isn't it? Yes, it certainly does, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I don't know, you know, but, uh, oh, look, yeah, it is, it is tough. And it's, it's funny, just some of the little things that, yeah, I think that we think about, that women deal with on a day-to-day -day basis that, yes, they wouldn't even register with me. I was, I was thinking the other day, something really simple. I got off the bus, it was quite dark, and I was walking home, and there was a guy who got off the bus with me, but he was walking probably just a couple of metres behind me, maybe mm. about five metres, mm. and I just felt really uncomfortable. Yes. And, look, I've seen this guy many a time. I know, you know, he's, he's, he just lives down the road, blah, 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 blah. But it was a real sort of sense of oh get off my back kind of thing and I just wonder would guys even sort of think that if a woman was walking five meters behind them in the dark would they think uh oh goodness me you know um it's just a quite a different uh yeah I suppose an awareness of of, of our our space the way that we hold our space in in the public um arena is quite different I think than, than the way that men would consider that mm. You work with um, quite a, um, or we both do, with quite a lot of younger women. How, you know, do you have conversations with them? How do you think they feel about this um, subtle sexism or mm -hmm. life in general as a young woman? Do you know? Yeah, um, yeah, we have had, I have had, you know, conversations with some of my team members and um, I'm finding it really refreshing. I think, uh, I know when I... Uh, Probably going back about 10 years ago, um, I was working again with a lot of younger women and I was a little bit disappointed because I felt that they were really um, sort of disowning all the word feminist and, and mm -hmm. feminism and as, if, as if it was a, oh, a bit of a, oh, again, probably just hardcore, shrewish, I don't know, men-hating women type thing. Um, and I know there was, there's a fabulous um, 
group in WA called Women in Mining, um, which is, yeah, just absolutely fantastic. It's a lot of networking, mentoring, you know, sort of uh, developing scholarships for women, sort of um, really, really good organisation. They had sort of like monthly meetups and that. Uh, and I know I was going off to one one day, spoke to a younger colleague and said, oh, you know, coming along. And she said, oh, no, I don't agree with it, with those kind of things. And it's like, oh, why not? And, oh, well, you know, why do we need to segregate these things? And um, I think, again, there was that notion that somehow it was just a bit of a bitch session, <laughs> you know. Uh, it was most peculiar. So it's really refreshing. So she would have been probably be, oh, no, she'd probably been about 35, 40 age so it was that sort of sort of one generation sort of behind me um but with the young women i'm working with now it's fantastic to see because i think they're really re-embracing that this notion of feminism and i think too it's very interesting they sort of getting to that age where they're sort of um you know having to think about uh issues around career versus or and motherhood mm. um and sort of realizing how um sort of the limitations sometimes and opportunities to sort of manage both those. Mm. Um, but, yeah, so it's really refreshing to see that, um, they, they, you know, they really are taking, sort of really interested. Um, and I know I've got a much younger brother and his, his girlfriend, she's oh, about 31 and she's, you know, very, very much into, uh, you know, quite staunch on, on, on her sort of, um, you know, around feminism and, you know, sexism and so on. Uh, and it's, yeah, really fantastic to see. It's, it's great mm -hmm. to see. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> it's funny, uh, sort of the younger guys in our team, um, oh, you know, they crack up some of the <laughs> comments that they come out with. It's just like, hmm, really? But it's great because if anything foolish is said, oh, they get pounced on so quickly. <laughs> like, very good. <laughs> yeah, which is great. So they, they get a free education. <laughs> <laughs> Any time there. Um, you know, but actually, it's, uh, I see it as a really great opportunity. And I think that's sort of one of the ways that we can sort of combat some of the stuff is, um, yeah, just sort of interacting with our, particularly the younger male colleagues. Uh, you know, they're still possibly malleable in that sense. Um, and just sort of, you know, calling out some of the sort of probably the more sexist mm -hmm. sort of notions. Um, yeah. yeah, and so it's good. And, so, and, it's, and it's great because it's, a, you know, we're all fairly friendly and it's often done with humour yeah. um, but the point is made you know the point is made so um, yeah that's, that's a yeah. good to see yeah I think this whole thing about um, going back about the resistance to feminism was um, a complete misunderstanding about what feminism meant mm. wasn't it you know they oh, still, absolutely. still saw in the media that whole rubbish about bra burning and all the rest mm. when mm. actually feminism simply means that women want equal rights to men Mm. and equal opportunities and everything that goes with that. And that's all it means, really. Oh, absolutely, 100%. Um, and, yeah, I, I, I absolutely agree with you. And I think, too, there was that notion, well, look, here we are, we're working, um, you know, we've, got, we've gone to university, we've got good jobs, blah, 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 it's all fine. Mm. Um, and perhaps, again, maybe they were a little bit, at the time, they were a little bit younger, so they weren't necessarily at that point where they wanted to, start having kids or, you know, maybe start coming up against some of the, the barriers. And they were also at a, in a junior position, so they weren't necessarily uh, trying to sort of climb the um, sort of career ladder. So I think perhaps they just um, weren't necessarily, necessarily aware. I, I'm not 100% sure, but I look, I agree with you. I think a lot of it was uh, around that sort of um, the incorrect notions about what feminism actually really uh, was about. But... Um, yeah, so, but it's, it's, it's really fantastic to see the younger women, you know, coming through now who are a lot more aware, which is great. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's interesting what you've been talking about. Um, several times you also talked about you had a group of women around mm. you and support. And yeah. um, so, so how important do you think that is still for women? Oh, Absolutely, hugely critical, and I would argue that that is probably the key thing that we can do to combat sexism. Um, and sort of, it's one hundred percent. I think it's all about support because I think in having that support team around you, um, and I suppose, and I hate using this word, but I think you feel validated then for just being, you know, being there, being who you are, um, and you know, uh, 
and when we're talking about this sense of uh, being a little bit feeling a little bit ostracized when you've got the boys clubs uh, so this is a way of really combating it um, but uh, and, and I think sometimes yes yeah, because I think if you if you're on your own sometimes you can sort of feel that perhaps oh, I might just be a little bit neurotic if, if there's some issue that you're not feeling comfortable with, mm. with. it's kind of good to have that that support and to have some, someone to talk to about an issue uh, and they can kind of say oh look you know we'll give you that advice say yeah look you're dead right or actually maybe you're not but when you do need to go into battle you have got <laughs> those friends there yeah. I know when, um, when I was at university in our geology department so uh, as I said we had a really inordinately large number of women that year mm. um, and you know, overall, it said the guys were fairly good, blah, blah, blah. But we did have an issue that on a couple of field trips, we'd had a few incidences where uh, it was, I wouldn't necessarily say it was specifically sexist, but it was just sometimes inappropriate behaviour. Mm. And we had a particular incident where, um, yeah, a lot of, a lot of inappropriate behaviour went on. And um, after this, yeah, this weekend away and, we felt that something needed to be done that, um, you know, certain codes around the way you behave in field trips needed to be sort of defined. So we, we, it was the women went to one of the lecturers to sort of talk about this and it all of a sudden it just blew up into this massive issue um, and it became, uh, oh, you know, what are those women, you know, on about and blah, 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 blah. And we, it, yeah, it was for a couple of weeks really uncomfortable. Um, but, you know, the issues needed to be resolved. There were sort of issues around a, a bit of bullying and just there was one person in particular was making some very inappropriate comments to some of the girls. Um, and so, and it was really interesting because it was the older male lecturers were, who are normally lovely, lovely people, all of a sudden very, very threatened by all this, really threatened. Um, and then we had to get the mediator, the university mediator in. Um, and sort of sat us all down in the room, sort of chatted around our concerns, um, you know, and eventually it got resolved. There was a new sort of code of conduct. Um, I think it was a great education for the guys in our team, uh, in our group. Um, and it was quite funny because we had a subsequent field trip that was also incorporated some um, guys from the, the physics department. So um, it was very interesting to see the difference in behaviour between the guys from the geology team and the guys from the physics department. Um, so I think the guys in the geology department had learned a few lessons. <laughs> and I know when a couple of the guys from the physics department made a few inappropriate comments. They got jumped on uh, very quickly by the guys. And so that was, um, that was great. But it wouldn't have happened if we didn't have that, that you know, support around. Um, and again, yeah, mining, um, is it just, yeah, some great, great women so I think that was, um, but that, that is really critical. I think, um, I, again, too, at mining, there was a situation where we had a few, a lot of um, new uh, graduates starting. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, we were in a bit of a slump at that time and there was not much for them to do. One of the senior geologists was very resentful of having these people dumped on him mm -hmm. and was just, you know, really quite awful to them. Um, and, you know, there was three young girls and he was just yeah, really quite dreadful. Uh, so, yeah, I sort of pretty much, <laughs> sort of pretty much, uh, sort of tackled him on that. And it, we sort of had a bit of an argy bargy, you know, and uh, we all got a little bit public, you know, at a meeting, sort of a bit of a stand up row. Um, but you know, it's like, no, 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 you don't get to bully people uh, because uh, you know it's not their fault that they've been you know placed here. But, um, and then, you know, a few of the other women jumped in as well. So he ended, in the end, had to sort of back down simply because, um, you know, well, he, he was in the wrong anyway. <laughs> but, you know, I think because we sort of recognised that was just not appropriate and unfair. Um, so, you know, I think that was, that was good. But, yeah, I think that for me is really hugely, hugely important. I couldn't think of anything more important actually than that. And I think that's why also a lot of these... Um, I think in terms of uh, joining, well, I, not so much relevant here, but it's like this woman, women in mining was great. Mm -hmm. And we did have this, the women in geology group, mm -hmm. which the guys used to refer to as the bitch and gossip section. Oh. Oh. 
see? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, oh, you're just going to go and bitch about the boys. And it's like, well, actually, you're not that interesting. We're not going to talk about it. <laughs> you know, so that was, but yeah, I said, I think, but, you know, they were great. So I think that, that it's really critical. Yeah. There's one thing um, one bit you raised there too, is that um, it's useful to have these other women to talk to so you can check the way you're feeling and mm. whether, whether you're right or wrong. And mm. I think that's really, really important to get that support and that confirmation because we often do doubt ourselves and mm. how we feel. And one of the mm. things that I am constantly saying to, um, particularly to women, but actually to anyone, is um, trust your gut. You know, trust mm. your feelings. Mm. You will be right. You only yeah. get trouble when you don't trust yourself with that stuff. But it's mm. really, really useful to have other women saying to you, no, no, you're not imagining thing mm. you know mm. that is not appropriate or whatever it is yeah absolutely and yeah 100 percent. i think that is the lovely thing about women is that as a rule we are you know supportive mm. and we do uh, are good hopefully generally at sitting there and listening to one another and you know um and providing that that feedback so um yeah no i think it's um because oh, i know this number of times I've kind of gone, oh, I know if I'm tired sometimes, I can get a little bit overly sensitive or if I'm in a cranky mood. And, you know, and also too, sometimes when you do screw up and it's quite refreshing for someone to go, eh, don't worry about it. Yeah, you screwed up, but you know what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And or, again, when it comes down to this, was I too much of a shrew? It's good for someone to go, that's fine. Whatever. You know, they can deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> So that's sort of uh, really good. So, yeah. Well, thank you very much, um, Maria. That's been really interesting. I always did wonder, you know, what it was like working in some of those occupations, like mining and mm. so on, where you mm. were in a minority and that was definitely a male sort of um, culture. So it's been fascinating and also your ideas have been really, really good. Um, as I said to um, my other interviewees, you know, we'd, we're trying to gather together some of these ideas and maybe, as Fiona, who I interviewed first, said, um, gather them together in some sort of little guideline or something like that. Mm. So thank you very much for that. Oh, no, thank you very much for the opportunity. And, look, and I think it's fantastic what you're doing. And Yeah, 100. You know, I think this is all part of that whole thing about supporting each other um, and providing that network and just sharing ideas and experiences and making people realise that they're not alone. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Janet. Okay, thanks. <laughs>